guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the test server and we're checking out the light bearer engraving. So we've already seen the Wilders, um, Raku very solid. We've seen Laika very solid. So let's check out what they're going to do with our light bearer heroes. So Shrill is the first one up. Attack rating is raised by, <clears throat> by 40%. That's a pretty solid buff for eight seconds. So this could really be one of the heroes that we could engrave. And then of course the 60 attack rating is reduced by 18%. Don't feel like that's gonna make a big difference. So it seems like a plus 30 on a Strilda with this Inspire could be really good, similar to Laika, but that's a pretty solid increase for the attack rating. So looking at Belinda, Belinda's current damage amplification is increased by 18 points during battle. Not gonna make a big difference because it is only for her. Um, I, I know, some of the other heroes can receive the buff, but it doesn't seem like from a from a crit standpoint, that's gonna be that, that much more damage. We're gonna have to see. Now she is utilized a lot of times on the guild bosses, so it might be worth investigating there. And then of course the blessing. Blessed heroes now have their damage increased by 15% for every attack. This effect can be stacked four times. So that is a significant, really a significant buff. Because also remember, um, she blesses the two allies with the highest attack rating. Attack rating increased by 20%. Crit rating increased by 20%. And now you're going to have the damage increase. So that could be very significant. I know a lot of people use the swap scroll on Belinda. I hope we don't regret it when it comes to building her out. But that seems like it's going to be possibly a pretty decent buff. Looking at rain, so health equivalent is increased to 60% of attack rating. Not really a big change there. Um, rain and her allies damage can be raised up to 35%. So remember guys, the attack rating and the damage are, are completely different. So this could make a little bit of a difference with that exploit buff. Um, probably not enough to make a difference, I would assume. But when it cost, comes to boss killing comps, it could be pretty solid. Falks, an enemy is immediately locked in Falks Coffin when Falks reaches his battlefield position. He usually does it pretty quick right after the battle, so not too impressed with that. Um, attack ability deal 40% additional damage to debuffed enemies. Again, not really too impressed with Falks overall. Lucius, health recovery increased to 240 from 220. Again, his attack rating is not very high. Um, even some of the newer heroes, I think are around 60,000. Um, why he's at 45, not going to make a big difference there. Lucius immediately recovers 35% of the health he has already lost, which again, his survivability, it's not an issue with his health recovery. Um, it's an issue with his survivability. He actually gets destroyed when you start getting into mid game, late game, end game, um, as a tank cannot hold his own whatsoever. Thane, additional damage dealt equals 21% of the target's HP, max HP. So not too bad, a 3% difference. I think they could have buffed him up to about 25. Um, I don't feel 21 is probably enough to really make a difference here. Each critical strike Thane deals raises his attack rating by 8% for five seconds. Can stack 10 times. Um, I wonder once it's stacked, would be pretty cool to see exactly how much damage he, he's getting because that's an 80% buff if that 8% is stack, stacking 10 times. Um, but it is only for five seconds. So it seems like he's going to be going through this cycle very fast um, with the crit rating, which again, looking at his damage, if they would have upped his damage, I think it would have made a big difference or gave him a little bit of a higher boost to the attack rating. Hendrick, damage taken while protecting teammates is reduced by 70%. Very situational, which is the problem with some of the other ones. And then Hendrick recovers 8% of his max health every second and becomes immune to damage for three seconds. Could feasibility, um, could work pretty well. I think they needed to do the immunity longer than three seconds. We have some that are eight seconds, some that are 10 seconds. Um, three seconds on him seems very short. I know he does get the health recovery, but again, he doesn't have the damage mitigation that we need to get out of a tank to really make it viable. So Rowan, hero may use a potion every four seconds. One second on a... Um, 40% max health might make a, a touch of a difference, but similar to his furniture, not gonna be enough to make a game changer. I really hope this would be a little bit different as in it would restore more of the maximum health, but ultimately Rowan is still gonna stay the same. 
And then energy loss when using this ability reduced to 35 from 50. Again, Rowan, not really much of a change there. Um, 15 energy is not really that much, and it is only when the damage control ability is activated. So if he doesn't take that more than 10% of his max health, this isn't going to do anything, unfortunately. So the 15% the I don't think is going to be a game changer, which again, a lot of players just rely on the signature item with his energy potion. It's not so much the ability for Rowan. So here with Gwen, we have stun effect is extended by one second. Again, the, the stun effect is good, but ultimately she needs more damage. That, that's really the, the big thing. Um, she doesn't put out enough damage when you start getting to late game, end game. That is the reason her comp falls off. It is not the crowd control aspect that she lacks. It is the damage aspect that she is lacking. When normal attacks use fire or lightning, the damage is increased to 260. Could be good, depending. Because looking here, um, she's got some crit rating in here. She's got some accuracy in here. But I'm not sure. Is increased to 260. I'm not sure what it is initially. I wonder if it says in here 220. And then this is... So if it's going from 220 to 260, a 40% increase could make a difference, but I don't think it's going to be enough um, to, to really make a difference to make her viable again. Rose, health recovery increase from 190 to 170. Again, not a big game changer there. And then nearby enemies lose accuracy. I, I don't like that because it's situational. If Rose is in the back with me here and there's no enemies around, that's not gonna do anything anyways. So a little disappointed with that one. Now, Cecilia, damage of each attack is raised to 145 damage per attack. So definitely getting a 15% damage boost. We're going to have to see exactly how strong that makes her. This is the interesting one. So Devil Trap. After entering the battlefield, Cecilia casts an enchanted circle beneath her own feet, which strengthens herself and simultaneously reduces the energy recovery speed of any enemy standing within it by 35%. So that that's a pretty big um pretty big energy recovery, but what I'm wondering is, is with her strengthening herself, what exactly that means um to to see exactly the the difference it's going to make with damage really. And then we have Rigby, each time Rigby enters a drunken frenzy, he receives 35 haste, which is decent but i believe he's already getting 25 so 10 more haste not going to be a game changer by rigby um immediately receives the healing effect of well rested at the start of battle again i don't feel like that is going to make a huge huge difference so if you look so he has a little bit of health recovery um health recovery rate is increased if he gets that at the start of battle Again, it, it might make him a little more difficult than the campaign to kill, but ultimately using the hero doesn't seem like it's going to be a big difference. Now we do also have Oscar Slice and Dice, 30% more damage, not gonna be a game changer there. Damage dealt to enemies is increased by 45% up until Oscar suffers from a control ability. 45% damage is good, but if he is getting crowd controlled, again, this is not going to do anything. So unfortunately that will um, not make a difference on that one. Ullard, very interesting one here as well. Damage immunity effects last for four seconds, so up from three, even after the um, recantation or recitation ends or is interrupted. So you're going to have a hero that is going to get a four second immunity, even if something happens to Ullard. That could be situational. Seems like it's going to be pretty solid. We're going to have to see exactly what that plays out. And then damage out after... That doesn't really make a difference. His damage is pretty minimal as it is, guys. We also do have Peggy. Peggy's guards create a shield around himself and the nearest non-summoned ally, which of the value 25% of the guards own health. Again, with the shielding ability, doesn't really make that much of a difference. And then damage dealt by each marksman reduces the enemy's accuracy by 25 points. So again, doesn't really make that much of a difference. All right, so we got Walker. A couple more here. This ability is prioritized and used with more frequency and grants Walker a shield. Again, the, the shielding aspect, they have these heroes that are continuous damage um, that they're doing the shielding aspect, which to me, the shielding aspect, just like we see with every other shielding hero, um, doesn't make that big of a difference. When you look at Almus, when you look at Anoki, you know, when you look at Lucius, the, the shielding aspect, similar to Life Leech, doesn't seem to really make that much of a difference. 
Old Faithful, every attack that does not deal a critical strike additionally increases Walker critical rating by four points, but will not exceed 40. So they capped the critical damage he can do. A little disappointed there. Then of course we have Morrow, guys. Duration that the enemy is manipulated for is extended to eight seconds. So going from six seconds to eight seconds, absolutely, absolutely build the, the 30, um, the plus 30 engraving on there. A two second manipulation aspect is going to be big. Additional damage dealt is equal to 12% of all damage dealt by the enemy target, but shall not exceed 500% of Morrow's attack rating. So they did put a cap on it, but a 2% increase to all damage dealt by the enemy target might not make that much of a difference. We're going to have to see exactly how effective that is as well. And that will do it for the light bears, guys. All right. So just to recap, um, Estrilda, yeah, definitely looking at that plus 30. That is a... a 10% attack rating boost might be good. Plus 60 um, doesn't really seem to make a difference. Belinda might be one to look out for. I, I want to see what kind of damage she's putting up with Rose in different formations. They might have made her viable with the damage increase and also the crit amplification. Um, Rain, again, only on bosses. Thane, possibly one. Gwen, possibly one as well. And then Ullard and Cecilia are the only other two that could be possibly viable. Honestly, looking at the light bearers as we use them today, it seems like Estrilda will be one to build because we do use her in the Twisted Realm bosses. Um, Cecilia, because we use her in the Abyssal Expedition. But the rest of them, it seems like they are not going to take a very high priority when it comes to the engraving system. Since a majority of the engraving system only does add stats to the heroes, there's not really much more benefit past that, I, I know some of their, their skills do get a little bit of a boost, but ultimately it is about the stats that they increase from the engraving. So guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think about the Light Bear engraving. And as always, thank you guys for watching.